Tuesday, everybody. My name is Scott Morgan Roth from Motor City Madmouth, and this is Inside the Pigskin. And Joshua Thor goes out there and spells it word by word in the chat room. Get ready for the show. We are ready for the show, and he spelled it out very nicely in the chat room. Glad to have my group on today, and that group consists of Smoking Jeremy B. Welcome back to the big show. Happy to be here. Ready to talk some football. Yeah, we're going to do that, all right. And my coach out there, Coach Bono, is on the program. Nice hat, nice shirt. It all matches very nicely. And there's no better. And when it comes to Bo, we have our Bo. Football talk with Bo. <laughs> Bo knows football. All right. And last but not least, Travis the Bacon Holmes. Of course, I had. Of course, he goes by Big cat country all right but whatever he's known for bacon too and that's what i had for bacon. i know i know and it's funny because i just went to kiki's the other day and had a whole plate full of bacon my wife was very 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 embarrassed yeah he's trying to shake that isn't he <laughs> yeah, all right, well, i gotta well, get ready for from the Michigan. Get, get ready for a busy sh- sh- chat room i feel it tonight but anyways let me give everybody an overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight we're going to talk about actually the title of the show does say should St. Louis get another NFL team? We'll talk about that. Warren Sapp joining Colorado staff. John Gruden hired by Italian pro football team. Probably the best place to get to get a job, anyways. Alvin Cook, and then of course we're going to give Jeremy his opportunity to talk about the Detroit Lions. And then I have a special congratulations that I'll spend at the latter part of the show. With that said, let's get it going. Let's talk about the United Football League. Yes. The United Football League, the UFL. All right. The St. Louis Battlehawks set a modern spring football record for 40,317 in a 27-24 win over the Arlington Renegades. The prior record was set by the Seattle, the St. Louis Battlehawks on March 12, 2023. 38,310 showed up at the Dome of the Americas or whatever you call it out there. So with that said, no, the uh, UFL, believe it or not, See, it's not fake. It's actually real. Okay, the merger between the XFL and the UFL. Many people may want to think it's fake, but their perception and the reality. All right, uh, I guess you mean clone, right? Okay, not clown. All right, see, no, good stuff. You a clown. <laughs> All right, well, either way, clone, clown, however you pronounce it, whatever dialect you use it. So with that said, okay, the big question here is, is we all know that St. Louis is a pretty good football town. I know that you know, the Cardinals got away, and that was St. Louis's fault. The Rams getting away really wasn't the city of St. Louis' fault. They wanted a sweeter deal out in L.A. So with that said, Travis, what are your thoughts? Do you think St. Louis deserves another NFL team? Ugh, deserves this. I mean, no, no, no. That's not, that's not the St. Louis. That's That that emotion is just a knee-jerk. What is this? Deserves? Who deserves what? Like at the end of the day, this is about money, man. This is about you know the the, the corporate overlords who rule all of our lives. Uh, so do they deserve a, a team? Sure, and I'm absolutely 100 percent sure there are fanatic fans there, just like there are fanatic fans everywhere. Uh, but they but the fans showed up. They they came and supported their team again in, in an early season in a new league. That's the most you can probably ask for. But deserve. Eh. That's a little much, you know what I mean? Like at the end of at the end of all of it, if the fans keep doing their thing and they can get a favorable situation for an NFL team, as far as the stadium, as far as the finances, and sometimes that's going to mean the NFL team just getting the best of the deal because that's kind of how it works these days. Then maybe they will get a team, you know, if they can just show this, you know, like a la Oakland, uh, a la LA, you know, teams that have gotten multiple opportunities to get an NFL team. So sure, but deserve, eh. It's about the money, baby. Okay. All right. With that said, Jeremy, what do you think about this one? Well, let's look at it this way. St. Louis has their fans actually show up to games, unlike L.A., where you see more of the away team's fans showing up than you do the home team fans. You, That's with the Chargers and the Rams. And the Rams won a Super Bowl there. So just for that alone, the fact they can put 45,000 fans in the seats, for the UFL, which you guys are calling a fake league, but if it's fake, why did the NFL adapt their kickoff rules? So, 
it is what it is. And we're also adding in the sky judge thing where they can actually review certain types of penalties too. So right. there's all sorts of things we're adapting from the UFL to the NFL now. And that it's only going to broaden that as it works to correct travesties, which is going to keep possibly from Las Vegas from paying off rent. Right, that. good point. So let's go back to the chat room. Rocket scientist, good evening. Gentlemen, good evening, rocket scientists. All right, Joshua has a great question for you, Jeremy. If one NFL team had to move to St. Louis, which should it be? <laughs> well, in case of uh, the attendance keep dropping because, well, they kind of suck, <laughs> you can always put the Bears or the Washington Commanders there. <laughs> I don't know if that's facetious or not. Don't hold your breath there, but it definitely. Yeah, if anything, it answers Joshua's question. We'll leave it at that. So, our UFL is going to overtake the NFL. It sounds like. Don't hold your breath there, no, Joshua. Definitely not. Yeah, you may maybe better go back to the Panthers game after the show. Okay, they're playing <laughs> Ottawa. Of course, oh, yeah, it does anyway. Panthers. Panthers could move there. Yeah, there you go. He, he's a big Panthers guy. That's okay. I, I give him a little uh, flexibility to put the Panthers updates in the chat room. I got no problem. All right, so, Coach, what do you think about St. Louis? I think it's great. I think it says a lot about the fans in that uh, in that city. Um, I, the UFL is a real league. You know, again, is it the – you know, we know it's not the NFL, but it's still – you know, there's quality coaching. There's quality play. And uh, they've done a good job of marketing it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna really get after my buddy Travis today, and because uh, I want to be controversial tonight, so I'm gonna say, you know, I, I like the sing the, the the sound of the St. Louis Jaguars. Oh, there we go. How are they going to go to St. Louis if they're in London? If that is an immediately. If they go, if it goes international, we already know that they're going to be the, uh, you know, the London Jaguars. Yeah, good points, coach, all the way around. Yeah, let's give it a. Let's go ahead and stick it to travel. Is that what it is? Okay, travel. I'm trying. I'm trying to be civilized here, man. Y'all making y'all making the bad things come out of me. And you know what will happen? Nice. You know what will happen? You want to flip the script here and like get too far ahead of it, but. Then they'll hire Gruden to be a, a, a consultant for them. Yes. As well. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I got to tell you, Coach. Hey, Coach, you know what? Here's the thing. You're really getting good at this broadcasting thing now that you're retired here. This guy is coming up with you well, it. Uh, you, you, you remember to send the topics out this week, Scott. Oh, well, oh come on. You don't send the, when you don't send the uh, topics, you know, we all go in blind. Yeah, but some of you guys have have to learn to think on your feet. But yeah, I got them out to you earlier. And you know the best part about getting them out earlier? I actually took my time and and, and wrote them to a point where you could read them. I yes. mean, that, you got a double whammy. All the, way, all the way up to the very last word when you just couldn't finish the tight end from Detroit's. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I had to uh, look back. yeah, that word was wrong. Not it's right, but it was wrong. <laughs> so there you hey. go. Hey, but I worked hard to make sure y'all can read them. All right. Well, you know what? All right, Bo. Uh, great segues all the way around. Love the uh, chat room out there. So here, you know what? Joshua Dorr, okay, is feeding off of this one from Mark Meridai. Coach, what is your favorite memorabilia and why? I like this question. Um, probably, oh, this this uh, item behind you right here. That's um, uh, God, we're going the wrong way. That's the, uh, before they'd had the uh, the uh, the iPads on the sideline that used to do Polaroids, and this was Reggie Bush's first uh, NFL touchdown. It was on a uh, punt return in the fourth quarter to win the game against Tampa Bay. And uh, after the game in the locker room, he he signed that for me. He said uh, it says to Coach Bono, my first NFL TD. Thanks, and he kind of circled circled himself in the path he used to to get to the end zone. Oh, and cool. uh, and then that's the front page of the Times Picayune, and uh, just an autograph photo of him uh, crossing the goal line on that very same play that they kind of used as his you know signature photo for that year. And so, yeah, that's you know that's uh, I don't think it has very much monetary value, but it's irreplaceable to me. 
Okay, well, let's go to the chat room. Look at this. Rocket scientist. Question for Coach. What is the logo you are wearing? Is that uh, your team? We can't, we can't answer that yet, Rocket Scientist. We have to wait till further on in the show, and then we'll That's address right. it. Okay, Rocket <laughs> Scientist, hang in there. Okay. I appreciate it's you noticing, though, because you, you, that puts you ahead of everybody else on this panel already because you noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That does. All right, Paul, go ahead. I, I just like that Coach has uh, – Woke up this morning and was choosing violence the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. So, Bo, what do you think? Do you think that uh, St. Louis should get another NFL team? I mean, it, their fans didn't want their team to leave to begin with. So right. it, it's not like it was poor attendance that had them leave in St. Louis. So uh, do I think that they deserve one? Uh, yeah. I mean, coming from a guy that had our NBA team taken away from us, and uh, our attendance wasn't bad either, right? Do I think that we deserve a, uh, you know, the, the Sonics come back? Sure. Do I think that it happens? Yeah, maybe. Uh, for St. Louis, I think their odds are significantly lower. Um, you know, it, it'll be a while before they get a bid on a team moving. The teams kind of look like they're happy where they are. If there was a team that was going to go, just because attendance is terrible and there's too much going on in LA anyway, I could see the uh, St. Louis Chargers being a thing. Ooh, all right, that's <laughs> a thing. Well, here I'll I'll say this: I do believe that St. Louis should get another NFL team, but as UFL teams do not draw, don't be surprised to see Oakland and San Diego get teams in those vacated NFL markets, just because you're having the same thirst factor as you do in St. Louis. Keep that in mind. That's something we could probably look at. Back to the chat room where these guys are on a roll. That again, I wouldn't expect anything. Thanks for the kind words. See, blue is my favorite color. And Joshua George happy because we're getting to his question. All right. Uh, NYM answered my question. Yeah, there we go. Are uh, you happy? You feeling better, Joshua George? Keep coming up. Smart point. Scientists. These guys are staying on point. They're getting better. I promise you. But then again, they were on, was it Chicks and Salsa or Three Chicks and Hi, today with Jennifer. So they're getting all their all their business out of the way so we can keep it clean, easy entertainment, right? Okay, let's keep it going. All right, so Robert Wardell, NBA stole the Sonics. I boycott the NBA since. Let me tell you something, Robert. You know, you boycotted it since, but a lot of people aren't going because they're sick and tired of load management. <laughs> so does St. Louis have only the blues for major sports? The answer, Joshua, is no, Okay. They've got the St. Louis Blues and the, uh, and the Cardinals. And you have the Cardinals. And I think they have soccer now and, of course, the Battle Hawks. They have a little bit of everything, two major and, and the other teams as well. Don't sell the MLS short either. So MLS is a good league, and I think they've built a stadium there. I actually think that St. Louis is a pretty decent sports town. But that said, we'll move on to the next topic, Okay. Warren Sapp joins Colorado's coaching staff. What better person to lead off than with a coach, right, Bono? Yes, sir. All I heard is that he is going to be the highest paid grad assistant in the NCAA, which, uh, you know, that's great. Look, you know, I'm all for anybody and everybody ch chasing their dream. You know, Sapp was a great player. Uh, those kids will, will, will glean a lot from him. Um, and, you know, honestly, it's a it's a smart move by Dion to bring him in as a graduate assistant. You know, he doesn't have to, uh, you know, put him on the road recruiting. You know, he's able to, you know, work out a deal where they can, um, you know, pay him a respectable salary. Something, you know, that's probably you know that was probably one of the biggest things. And I think it's a it's a huge win for for the Colorado program. That does it add to the you know, the circus factor, absolutely it does. But, I mean, that's what they've, you know, they've bought into that culture and that's they've decided that that's the direction that they want to go. And I applaud them at least for not going halfway in it. They're, they're, not, they're definitely not dipping their toe in the water when it comes to their approach of, you know, their, you know everything that they're doing is on social media. Uh, you know, I, I think it's... It's uh, it's something that's never been done before. It's new. It's fresh. It's uh, and it's pure entertainment. And you know, I don't know if this is the direction that 
you know, college athletics is going. I don't personally think so because I don't think not everyone can get away with that. And not everybody wants to put their stuff out there like that. But, you know, it's, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, what happens. I like the fact that it's there and I think it's a great, great thing for the program. All right, Bo, what are your thoughts about Warren Sapp up in the Rocky Mountains? Yeah, I mean, obviously that that fits what it is they're building. It definitely, like Coach said, adds to the, the chaos factor of the program they have. Um, but, uh, you know, does it make them significantly better? That we have yet to see. I do have a question for you guys, though. Um, what did you guys think of Dion basically directing his kids to pull an Eli? Doesn't surprise me. He would. <laughs> what, what are, you, are you referencing where he said that he did, they would not play for certain teams if they were drafted? You know. Yeah, and and it wasn't just his kid, right? Like it was also uh, Travis Hunter, right? And so when it was for his kid, it kind of made sense um, a little bit. You know, he wanted to protect him from cold weather. Uh, although, as I recall, you know, playoff football happens in the winter, so I don't know how how useful that really is. But at the same time, it's not like an Eli situation where it was, I'm not going to go to this one team. It's a, here's a list of half the league he doesn't want him to go to. And that seems a little bit crazy to me. Yeah, I yeah, struggle with that. I, that story kind of blew past me. I didn't really give it much attention. Um, you know, so I'm kind of learning as I go here. But, uh, you know, I, I'm wondering and and – you know, this is just totally off the cuff, but I know when when Dion was at Jackson Jackson State, um, when draft time came around and uh, they had their pro days, I remember him several times being a little bit perturbed that not every NFL team went to their pro day. That there were a lot of people that kind of scratched his kids off, and I'm I'm just curious if if that might have. <laughs> You know, might be part of the backstory. You know, is uh, he maybe that he feels maybe he felt slighted by those schools because they weren't looking at all his players. I don't know. I, I kind of have a alternative view on this one, and I heard you guys on uh, hanging with Mister You. You guys uh, talked about this on your Monday show, uh, Bo. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, that was a fun one because I'm I'm a former cornerback. I I'm. I'm, a, I'm one of those little guys, uh, one of those specialists. Yeah. Uh, so I and I played up in northern Michigan and I played at UCF. So I played in the snow. I played in the cold. I'm uh, sorry, in the cold and in the heat. I know that I see the difference. So and from someone's like Dion's point of view, who's now an older, you know, former NFL Hall of Fame cornerback. Talking to two specialists, talking to two guys who are going to make their living and make their you know name based on the stats that they put on the field. I can understand from that perspective coming from who is coming from and being told to the two guys who is being told to, hey, they don't, the, the Hall of Fame doesn't care if you truly want to be one of the best of the best of the best. The Hall of Fame doesn't care if you played in the snow, or if you played in the heat. The Hall of Fame tells you, hey, these are the stats. This is what you did. And this is your career. Right. So if you're looking at it from that point of view, hey, if you're looking at it from the long term point of view, I can understand the argument of, if you can try to get your career to take place in these southern cities, you're going to increase your statistical output, fill in the blank percentage, simply because you're in a better weather you know, situation or you're in a dome or something along those lines. Sure. Fully understand that if you're coming from it from that perspective. So from, if you're talking about an offensive lineman, defensive lineman, et cetera, I fully get that, you know, that you can't be having that same conversation, but he's not. Yeah, but you can't have that conversation outside. Like you can have that in house. You you can be directing that to your to your kids, right? You can be like, hey, this is kind of what you want to do. But that's a conversation between you and that kid. You don't go on a podcast and be like, yeah, I'm telling these kids to basically negate half the league. <laughs> when have you ever known Dion to say stuff that's not going to get immediate attention? Come on, man. That man is saying he's going to say what he's going to say in the way that he wants to say it, and then put it on the podcast or put it no on doubt. YouTube later. But at the same time. That can hurt. That can hurt draft stock. Well, you, no. you, can't, you can't come out and be like, "Hey, Shador is going to be 
if he came out today, he's the second one off the board. Next year, he'll be the first one off the board, which first off, I don't think that's true anyway. But hypothetically, if it was, you're like, okay, you want him to be number one off the board, but you're going to tell half the teams, uh, yeah, he ain't playing for you. <laughs> What's the point of trying to be number one off the board? We're at a time that NIL money changes this ball game. It changes our conversation that we're having right now. Let's let's be clear about this. Oh, no doubt. The money that these kids are making, that the two kids that we're talking about are making right now is already, I won't say life life altering, uh, you know, uh, but it's most definitely life uh, stabilizing, bare minimum. Uh, plus when I was 18 would have changed my life dramatically. <laughs> right. So we are already talking about guys who are making millions of dollars and comfortable where they are. These are probably not guys who care very much if you're talking about that rookie contract sure. at minimum, you know, that rookie contract setting yourself up for success early. That's all that that's that's all that I'm speaking on is I, I fully understand what he's going from. If you want to cut off half the league to make sure you're going to be one of the NFL greats come later. I'd rather be picked 15 than pick one. If, I'm, if it's going to mean that I'm actually going to be someone who's known five years from now. No, I'm with you. Sorry, Scott. Didn't mean to hijack your show here. <laughs> oh, I, it doesn't matter. I love the dialogue because all you're doing is getting the chat room rolling anyways. Jeremy, you got the last word on this. We go to Candy, and there's a good – Robert Wardell has a comment that I'm going to address after Jeremy's done, or I should say after Candy's done. All right, go ahead, Jeremy. Well, we're talking about the same guy who said, if Detroit drafts me, I'll sit out. Well, not only that, he you know what he also said? He said the Ford uh, – that the, the Ford's – that Detroit can't afford me, and little did he know that it was a Ford Motor Company, okay, that owns that team. So Dion, when he said that, I lost all respect for him. You mean to tell me, Dion, really, that the Ford can't afford you? Seriously, are you crazy? I had to get that out. You look at his get, at his uh, <laughs> contract he had. They've paid more for bad players than Dion's made. Yeah, well, so that's mm. true. So, no, I'm glad you brought that up, Jeremy. So, with that said, we're going to go to Candy very quickly. Go ahead, Candy. So, if you are listening on us on YouTube, I hope you've hit your subscribe button. And most of you have, but have you shared us with all of your friends and family? If you like to listen to podcasts, listen to us on iHeartRadio, Google, Apple, Spotify, Podcast Addict, wherever you do podcasts. Go to our website, www.selfwordtribune.com. Scott writes, Jeremy writes. We get the Jags, we get Dolphins, we get Lions stuff, we get stuff from the NFL. We're hopefully going to be covering the draft, so you never know. Go see some of the pictures I've taken. Joshua, thank you for the recognition. And see, love you, love you back, especially your sour kittles. How that's cute. Uh, but most importantly, Scott wrote a book. It is called Lessons from the Microphone: Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Apple Books. Go get yours today. Thanks for that station identification. All right, Back let's to you, go. Scott. Thank you, Candy. Let's talk about what Robert Orwell and my favorite Dion having to talk at his team, with the professor saying that his players didn't take their education sir. That is a bad look. All right, you know what? I'm going all the way from the top there, Jeremy. I've heard this story too. What are your thoughts about it? Uh, my favorite was Dion having to talk to his team because professors kept saying that players don't take their education seriously. Well, it's because they don't. There was a point where they said, what was it, 12 players might have been in, ineligible for one of their bigger games mid, midway through the season. I think it was right after the Colorado State, the Colorado-Colorado the State game. So, you know, and that was when they were actually getting into the meat of the Pac-12 schedule. And I think uh, four players had to miss the game because they didn't raise their grades in time. So, if you've got to tell your team, hey, you got to do your academics, evidently you've got guys that uh, overshot their IQ <laughs> yeah. for, what, for what they were studying. You know what I'm talking about. If oh, you're yeah. just an athlete, nine times out of ten, 
you get that sports management and medicine degree where it's really not medicine. It's about more about rehab and working out. Yeah. It's something they can handle. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's something right. well, they I know. Can... I'm trying to be nice about it too. Okay. No, I, I, there is no being nice about it. It's because some people do not have the mental IQ or the aptitude to be able to pass study enriched courses. And I'm not talking about anything normal. I'm talking about, you know, they need to have things easier. Some of them even take the how to be a phys ed teacher course. You know, <laughs> I, I'm talking realistic because when you got the guys that barely skate by through high school with just a good enough GPA to enter college and get that, you know, that athletic scholarship, they aren't the best at, uh, scholars. Right. And and those guys do exist. I mean, obviously, we know we know if you, anyone who's spent a modicum of time in, you know, college football circles, you know, some of those guys. Absolutely. However, there's also a lot of guys who simply just are hyper focused on football. They're hyper focused on the parties, they're hyper focused on the girls, and they do have the capability to do the work. They simply don't have the discipline to do it. And that is a different conversation. You don't want to, yeah. We don't want to assume it's all guys who simply don't have the capacity to do it. I didn't say all. I, I know, and I'm not saying you're saying it. I'm just saying that for everyone else, because a lot of these guys, I know you have, but a lot of these guys don't spend time around college athletes. They don't know. They know what they see on TV or what they hear from other people, and all jocks are dumb. And I want to just make sure that that is known. Yo, a lot of these guys actually have football and academic scholarships. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. I had a 4.4 GPA in high school. And I played college football. That's not that's I know that's not all athletes, but there's a lot of guys out there. And yeah. I just wanted to say that they, if the guys aren't paying attention in class because they're just so happy about the game, they're talking about whatever else, yada yada. They just they're 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 chopping it, they're chopping it up instead of paying attention to school. That's not a you know, that's not a that's not an ability issue. That's simply a discipline issue. And he's right to have that conversation with his team and kind of get these boys in check. Be that be that dad that their parents are leaving these children. With him to be okay. Uh, let's go to you, coach. You I, obviously, yeah, want to go to coach because obviously you coach at Central Michigan yeah. University. Yeah, I agree. I agree with with Travis on on all of his points. I mean, it, you know, in this day and age in college football, the uh, the amount of academic they they literally you know your major colleges literally have armies armies of people that they have employed that are in academic support roles. And it more often than not, if, if you have issues, it's a, it's a motivation issue, uh, it's a discipline issue. And, you know, I mean, Dion was absolutely right. And that's what he should do is call those guys out, you know, call them out in front of the team. He did, he used them, he called them out by name, you know, and I think he even uh, asked, had one of his assistants in the back saying, what's his draft ranking? He doesn't have one. You know, in other words, you know, you, 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 this is the opportunity you have in front of you right now. You need to take advantage of that because you're going to leave here. You know, if you're going to be in this program, you have to leave with something and the NFL is not a guarantee. And that's, that's a very accurate factual message. And look, Hey, I, I hate to say it, I've been there. I've had to give that message before, you know, it's uh it's, it's necessary. It's not fun. It's very disappointing. There's nothing more disappointing as a coach, uh, whether it's an assistant and it's somebody in your, you know, in your position room or as a head coach, you know, any of your players, it, it's one thing to struggle academically. It's a total another issue when you're, you're just there, but you're not present. You're, you know, you're, you're not engaged. You're, you're not, you're, you're not participating. You're just, you know, breathing air. You know, that's, that's you know, again, look, I, I've been there. It's not, it's not a fun conversation to have, but one that has to take place. All right. So who's left? Bo, did you get a word in on this one yet? Um, no, but it, I mean, there really wasn't much left for me to, um, to add there. It, um, I mean, we've we've watched it, as players. We've watched other people enjoy these conversations. So I mean, it uh, 
you know, some somewhat to William's here point here is, you know, the parents also have to get them engaged, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot yeah. to add. Uh, everybody pretty well covered that. All right. Good. Good comment here by William Kafara. Can you put that back up, Candy? Get it up there. Well, okay. Where was it? All right. I, I do think so, something uh, Travis hit on the family and sign up to the coach to make them do the schoolwork, even though it doesn't hurt. Parents need to step up, and so does the kid. All right. All right. An easy question, Bo. I'll let you answer this so we can move through it. Okay, why did Justin Fields get traded to the Steelers? Joe, Paul, I'll just let you answer this one. Well, I mean, I feel like you have to move on, right, from Justin Fields. If you're if you're drafting a quarterback and they have a ton of pressure to do exactly that because they missed the year before, right? They squandered their pick. There's a lot of pressure for them. Even if they didn't necessarily want the quarterback, you can't miss again. And ultimately, Fields doesn't develop into something. So – but Fields is too big of a prospect to then also have him as a backup on that team. So, yeah, I mean, you, you trade him away. Uh, I feel like they definitely picked the wrong timing, which is a very Bears thing to do, uh, to get the least amount of return on a guy. Uh, had They had better offers that they waited on, didn't take. And, uh, you know, obviously they had one more offer that was significantly better, but it was within the division. So it made sense they didn't want to go that route. But, uh, you know, I mean, ultimately you had to move on. I would actually not be super surprised if um, because the Steelers don't have anything really invested in Russell Wilson, that they, after after the draft, flip him for, you know, a third or a fourth. And, you know, they're into him for a million bucks. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. All right, well, we I'll tell you what, Travis, you're not alone. D. Lowe says, let's go USF alumni here. I got to love that one, huh, Travis? You got a, a night there right here. Joshua Doerr, spot on. Bo, at least be told. Dion, it's all did, about the action. Boss. Did you say USF alumni? D. Lowe. UCF. UCF. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I'm like, mm, mm, mm. We, we can't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Everyone went to USF. Uh, Rocket scientist is on a roll. This guy is actually they all these guys are sharp characters. Let me tell you, when you get to talk to these guys all the time, they're as sharp as they get. All right, let's keep going here. Let's see, Candy. All right, now I'll see got a uh, candy comment in there. Love candy, especially our sour kiddos. L O L. All right, well, there you go, candy. Uh, yeah, I'm so picking up your candy called Skittles. All right, keep it going. Candy. All right. Well, she's got a lot of fans in here. Who is Robert Wardell? I don't see him here. Okay. I don't. Uh, and now we got William uh, Carfa saying, hey, hey, hey. But no, this isn't the Cosby kids. This is inside the big pen. Okay. Okay. It's, if anybody remembers that show. Inside the big pen doesn't like our commentary. No, I think it's pretty good. We just have to go out there and get around to getting to it. That's all. But we're doing it. All right, now rocket scientist Scott owes me big time. I'm sharing the show, getting new people in here, providing excellent commentary. What do I owe you? You're on, and I'm waiting to get you on, rocket scientist, but you're not ready to do it yet. So don't worry. <laughs> okay, I give he everyone gets a on, bro. opportunity. He so gets now, my vote. Huh? He he gets my vote. <laughs> oh, there you go, rocket scientist. You're making friends pretty quick, Josh. You guys. Need a South Florida Tribune Care Package ASAP. All right. Now Rocket Scientist is on a roll. Also went to UCF. There you go. Let's keep it going. We'll see how fast I can talk here. Of course, that doesn't take much. I drive faster than I talk. We are taking over. If you didn't go to USF, that DTFO. I'm not big on those emojis or what do you call those things or abbreviations. All right. Now, William Carafa, I do think Travis hit on the family. It's not, all right. We already got to that one. Some of my coaches have been my biggest influences. That's good to hear, William. A lot of coaches aren't, and they don't get the credit that they deserve. We're getting on the big screen. What's going on? So, there you go. Keep them rolling. I can't talk that fast. I'm running out of voice. I still need it for another 25 minutes. All right, Scott, and inside. Blow it up. Yeah, I didn't rocket scientist. Look at this. Now we have a new chatter. Zom. Okay, keep it going. And you guys were in a country club earlier with Candy and Jennifer. So here we have it. If I haven't said it, Candy put it up there. So there you go, rocket scientist. Tell me what else I owe you. Then again, don't because I'll probably hear it tomorrow when you guys call me four or five times anyways. It doesn't matter. 
So with that said, and I enjoy these guys talking. It, 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 I've never seen a bunch of characters so fun to hang around. All right. So with that said, anybody want to add to all of this? See who I owe what? Did any of you guys register <laughs> with some of all this? Anything stand out? I'm oh. ready for the next question, the next topic. All right, good. We're on to the next topic, guys. Doing the best I can to get him up. And now we're going to go to the next one. And this is a pretty good one, too. John Gruden hired by Italian pro football team in Milano Simon as an advisor, European League of Football. Well, you know what? I got to go back to the coach again, Coach Bono. What are your thoughts about John Gruden? Well, first of all, this is why rocket science deserves to be on the on the on the show. So when you sent out the questions earlier today, I saw that. And uh, I happen to have insider knowledge on this one. Um, okay. So rocket science, to answer this, your question, this is an official shirt from the Milano Seamen of the uh, an American football team in Milan, Italy. Um, back in October, their president, Paolo Muti, um, who's been with that organization a long time, uh, actually played for them. They've been playing football over in Italy for, for a while. We could do a whole show on, on football in Europe, Scott. But uh, long story short, Paulo came over to the United States and he and I went over to meet with uh, Coach Gruden. We spent a, a, a half a day with him uh, and uh, Coach Gruden uh, agreed to be uh, you know, a, a consultant, uh, as did I. And um, they have since, you know, they, they sent their offensive coordinator over for a couple of days. He got to go meet with uh, Coach Gruden over at the Fired Football Coaches uh, headquarters down there in Lutz, floor, in Lutz. It's a, it's a great spot. And uh, you know, that's pretty much of it. I know the media got a hold of it and it, it kind of made its way around. Uh, I know Coach is planning on being there, I think, at the – end of uh, June uh, for one of their games, but it's more of a consulting role. He's not taking any money for it or anything like that. But if you know Coach Gruden like I do, you know that he's a, he is a football guy through and through. Um, and, you know, he is willing to do anything to help anybody, especially, you know, in promoting the game. And uh, just the mere fact that you have a Super Bowl winning head coach uh, that – you know, has really kind of taken it on himself to spend some time with these people to try to promote the game. It says a lot about him. Um, and that's, that's you know, that's really the extent of it. That's the whole story, the, the story behind the story. Uh, and you're only going to get it here on your show, Scott. There you go. Well, you know what? I got to go to Rocket Scientist. Coach is eager to tell us about the logo on his hat, right? Want to give a little bit of in-depth commentary about the logo on your hat? Well, yeah, I, just, I did. I thought that's the uh, Milano Seaman. It's the okay. The, all right. I, just I got the me. whole. I guess I didn't mention that the hat, but you know that's the European uh, European League of Football. So this is their, you know, uh, Paolo, the president, gave Coach Gruden and I, you know, a couple shirts and a hat. So awesome. I knew it was going to be one of the topics on the show, so I decided that I'd I'd go ahead and rep their stuff today. Look at this guy. All right. Well, now, Steve, of course, you know he's going to dive into this. Thing. Cool hand. I want one. See, we're going to find out if you ever make it on one of these shows, you're going to have a nice hat collection because you want well, to. Here, I'm right there to actually help you guys that are in the chat room. Let's yeah, these guys are great, man. I'll tell you, you got to put C on there. We got to get some, some of these guys got to get on the air one time, one of these times. I mean, their comments are great, but all right. So now rocket scientists, another great question. <clears throat> Did you, I'll tell you, rocket scientists are following this stuff really good. Did you get Billy on the team? Regan? No, no, I was not able. I tried, but their roster was already full. But what that was, I made two calls, uh, one to the Milano team and another team in Germany that I work with, uh, the Dresden Monarchs. And, uh, but their rosters were full. We're still actively looking, though. Okay. All right, rocket scientists on a roll, so I got to stay with the roll. Congratulations to Co. Uh, you forgot to see, buddy. But all right, that's okay. At least he got didn't forget the exclamation points. All right, so William Carappa, get some running backs out of the U.K. They don't stop. All right, there you go. 
Grant's coach. All right, look at all this stuff. Coach is getting all the love, as he should. Okay. Travis is cracking up the room tonight. I don't know. Cracking up the room. Okay, I showed you my eyes aren't very good anymore. Billy's a good kid. Yeah, we know. And actually, believe it or not, we're going to try to get Billy on next week at some point. Either on the Motor City Mad Mouse show, we'll bring him on inside the Big Ten. Not sure what he's going to have, but I'm going to reach out to him later on this week after I get done with all my spring football games. All right, well, to be honest with you guys, any of you guys want to comment about John Gruden going overseas? Uh, Travis, go ahead. You start. No, nah, man, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome that he's interested in – helping to expand the game. I mean, the, the, that that league, the European Football League, has been expanding for a while now. I mean, we're, I think it started in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and, and the league has been slowly growing, just like football in Japan, just like football pretty much worldwide. Um, so it's kind of awesome to already have your imprint made over here in the States, and you can still take it across seas. And, again, just keep, keep, growing, the, keep growing the game, keep putting your imprint elsewhere. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, now Joshua Jordan, coach, would you move overseas to coach? Um, temporarily, I would. Um, absolutely. I think it's a great opportunity. You know, um, I had a friend of mine who did it uh, last year in Germany. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, obviously it's got to make sense. You know, those, those uh, teams don't pay a lot, so it's not something you would do for, for money. But at some point, um, I could definitely see myself doing that again. It wouldn't require, they don't require you move over there full time. It would be a, you know, like a, a five month or six month deal, but uh, they pretty much cover all your expenses and stuff. So yeah, it's something I, I've, my wife and I have definitely thought about and talked about and it, it could happen at some point in the future. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Anybody else want to add to this? Jeremy? Do you still have any connections with the Lions about getting Billy Regan to look at over there? Uh, I do, but, you know. Just saying, UDFA. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i sure they're aware of uh, their, their scouting report department. You know, does a pretty good job. Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen enough to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There's a reason he's not in, the, in somebody's camp. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But all right. I mean, and he's getting exposure on our network. Hopefully somebody will land him at yeah. some point, whether it's the UFL or whether it goes back to Canada, if anybody's guessed. Well, of but, course, yeah. the, the AFL just uh, just reported on the first. Right. So uh, a lot of those uh, a lot of those rosters aren't completely locked down yet. Right. So uh, some of the AFL still has uh, still has openings. OK, good to know. All right. Glad you brought that up. All right. Well, let's go on to the next topic. Okay. Everybody all sit on this last one. Just like um, sure. Yeah. One, one thing, uh, Scott, I was trying to uh, post the, uh, the European football league website in, in the chat room. It wouldn't let me do it, but they, Candy they, there now. Candy there. There. so for whoever that asked about the gear, if you go to that, their website and it's uh, if you just, if you Google European league of football, uh, it'll take you to their website and they have a link on there where you can shop and you can buy get merchandise from any of the teams that are that play in that league. Thanks. There you go. So for all y'all that want hats and all that, now you have it. Coach found it for you. Candy got it in the chat. All right. Next topic. Dalvin Cook. Eyes next opportunity. He says, I'm still that guy. All right, Jeremy, do you think he's still that guy or does he have anything left in the tank? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I. <laughs> you mean to tell me there's a question you really don't know? This is I'm a, I'm in I'm at a loss for words. I'm in shock right now. Right? Like I I like that you were just fumbling the ball there. <laughs> Jeremy, this is the first time. I can't believe I'm asking you a question you really don't have an answer to. And no, I'm not knocking my hat off either. So don't think you're going to try by pulling a buffalo move on me. You you no. don't know if he has anything left or where his next opportunity is going to be. No. Okay. I, I no. Maybe maybe on Tahiti on a beach with a mojito. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quit while you're ahead. That's good. Okay, I'll turn it over to Travis. Maybe give me a little bit more than you did. Oof, that's a hard one, man. 
Uh, it's well, these, uh, these questions aren't designed to be all that easy. Well, I mean, this man is an, a 28 year old running back, and that's not like ancient, but it's also older. I mean, we right. know how running backs can fall off a cliff. You can be incredible one year, and then the next year is just like, dude, what happened to him? It's like the tires just blew out. And you don't know. So he, no matter what kind of contract he's going to get from whatever team he's going to get it from, it's more likely than not going to be a prove it situation. And it's more likely than not going to take place after the draft, maybe even closer to training camp when teams kind of get the roster set, they need a veteran presence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but he's going to have to show that he is that that he is one of those guys who are different than you know the norm that they fall off that cliff and all of a sudden they're no longer the guy because just looking at how he looked when he was playing with the Jets it didn't look very um, he he didn't lead me to believe that he still has something left in the tank but again these are also these gladiators who they're 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 they're, they're the way that they operate is. I can't believe what anyone says about me. I am that one that one percent of the one percent. Like I am, I am, I'm, I, I'm going to achieve all these things above and beyond what you think I'm going to achieve. That's you how know, they operate. Oops. The thing that's funny is, I, I think what actually helps him get another job is the fact that he was playing with the Jets, and we mm. just watched Flacco, who looked like he, his career was as done as it could possibly be land with the Browns and be okay. Right. Like nothing great. Yeah. So I, I think Dalvin cook actually gets a shot for no other reason than now you look at it as ah, I was with the jets, <laughs> but, but there were other running backs with the jets who looked good. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's not the jets like they ruin careers. So I think, I think someone will take a flyer on him because you probably get him for almost a vet minimum and he'll probably take a deal like that to stay in the league. So he'll be on a roster. All right. Well, while you're at it, uh, Bo, Robert Wardell has a question. Yeah. DJ Flicker looking for a job for the Austin Union, you think maybe? Yeah. I mean, so one, one thing I'll say is Fluker did an amazing job uh, rebuilding his body. Right. Um, so, and a, a buddy of mine is actually the trainer that helped him do it. So, um, so shout out to, uh, shout out to them. And, and of course uh, for him getting his body right, but you know, he hasn't played meaningful football in a while. And I don't know that he necessarily fits in the way that McDonald is building this defense. Now, most of this defensive roster is one year contracts. So it, it's something that they may bring him in and take a look at him, but uh, all, all things all things being equal, it has been a little while since he's played meaningful football. Okay. All right, that, all right Coach Bono, thoughts on Dalvin Cook will remain in the chat room a little bit. There's a lot more to get to. What do you think about it? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, all fall long, what did we talk about when we talked about the Jets is how horrible the quarterback play was, correct? Yeah. So, you know, when, you know, there's a lot of smart people in the NFL. I mean, if you have a team that's one dimension, if, if you're playing the Jets last fall, you want them to try to throw the ball to have to beat you. You're not going to let them run the football, right? So, I mean, Dalvin has had some incredible uh, years. He's a he's a gifted guy. Uh, you know, Bo said it, or I mean, excuse me, Travis said it. He's at 28, he's not young, but he's not old. I think there's, I think there's a lot of tread left on that tire still, uh, if he gets in the right situation. And uh, you know, he's definitely not somebody that I would rule out or bet against. I definitely, you know, how much longer can he play? Who knows? You know, again, we've 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 gone round about that uh, on this show many times. You know the the shelf life for an NFL running back just isn't that long for the, for the majority of the guys, very talented guys. You know, there, there aren't many Adrian Peterson's out there that can play as long as that guy did. You know what I mean? The most of them, you know, five years, six years is, is really, really good, you know? Um, but I, I think he'll, I think he'll, you know, I think uh, it might even be better for him if he 
if he doesn't sign with somebody until after training camp starts. You know? Well, you know what? That's a great point. Now, let me. You want to continue your thought because now you got me thinking about this. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, you 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 see that happen with veteran players. Like, right. you know, does he need training camp? Yeah, he needs, oh. it, but he does he need preseason games? And especially right. an older, an older guy, you know, you. You, you bring him in at the end of, end of training camp versus at the beginning, you know, let him find his legs and get him ready for the week, you know, for week one. And, you know, you, you save a little bit of wear and tear on the guy. Right. Yeah. So really what you, I, the X factor really comes down to one thing, you know, let's see how many running backs get taken and where they go in the NFL draft. And then we can gauge if there's going to be any interest. And if you do, he's going to get paid pennies on the dollar. Like you say, just to continue playing football. But that is a good point. All right, back to the chat room. See, yeah, you're right. This is a place to chat. We certainly take pride in that. <laughs> okay, so I want to put that up. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we have a lot of fun in here, don't we, guys? And these guys are doing a good job staying on topic, which makes it even better. I haven't seen some of these tough questions like a champ. All right, champ. All right, let's keep them rolling. All right, let's go back to Mr. Wardell. Yeah, trying to ensure that love gets spread around. I can sure Bo get some props, but I have this one going uh, on now for the tablet. All right, look at this. Look at these guys. All right, Bo, you're getting some love. Good man, Robert. Okay, what do we got? All right, let's keep going. All right, Katie, keep them rolling here. I would like to see Robert as a guest on the show. Well, I'd like to see a lot of you guys get on the show. But uh, there's perception, there's reality. Okay. Uh, some of them are just don't want to come on camera, and they do a great job in the chat room. That's what the perception of reality keeps going. Horrible QB playing the Jets. Isn't that a given? Boy, don't, it doesn't it seem that way? Yeah, obviously it does. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you're when you're Zach Wilson being run out of town and Aaron Rodgers were placed into it. Okay, AP was not human. I still think he was a cyborg. I mean, <laughs> honestly, AP for one game probably still gets 100 yards. <laughs> yeah, even now. But and 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 ooh, Bo, you made a point earlier saying, it, "Well, yeah, it was Brees Hall." And thank you for saying that out loud. Because now that I just looked at Brees Hall's stats and the fact that his average per you know per carry was only about a yard more than Dalvin Cooks, and you know Brees, Brees has a lot of longer <laughs> runs, kind of the, runs, yeah, basically right. He has a fifty-yard run, a seventy-yard run, et cetera, et cetera, and that's what changes that. And so Dalvin's not that guy. So if you are someone, so I, you might have been right. I can I can own on this podcast that I might have been wrong with my initial assumption. <laughs> he just based on looking at the stats from both of them in comparison, they are very similar, other than those explosive runs. Uh, so if you give Dalvin someone who can actually you know reasonably block, give him a yard or two before contact, you might be working with something. So if, if Ezekiel Elliott's on people's radar, then Dalvin Cooks should be too. Absolutely. Well, my work here is done. Thanks for having me, guys. Nope. <laughs> now, is, is that an April Fool's joke or is that an April reality? Do you have another show you got to get to, Bo? I, I do, but I got a couple minutes still. All right. Well, okay. Last topic. I'll let you answer it first, okay? And that's this. Detroit Lions match 49ers three-year $12 million offer sheet for Brock Wright, of course, considering I spelled the name so greatly. Okay, and made it look wrong. So, Bo, give me your quick thoughts about Rock, and I'll let you get to your other show real quick. I, I, I don't know if it necessarily moves the needle. Like, it'll be – I'm interested, right? Like, I, wa I want to see how it plays out, but I don't I don't know that it really moves the needle for me. Okay. Okay. Well, then I guess you can move the needle. Then I guess you can move the needle, let everybody know how they get a hold of you and go to your next show. How does that sound? Uh, yeah, so you can see me, and some of you are currently on my channel at Football Dash Talk, and of course I'm here every Tuesday night. And uh, you know you can catch me five days a week on Roku on the show that's on the screen behind me, Coast to Coast. Uh, other than that, thanks for having me on, guys. Always a pleasure to hang out with you. See yeah, you next week. see you next week. Thank you very much, Bo. All right, there you go. All right, so with that said, all right, we'll go to Detroit, okay, or Michigan. And what do you think, Jeremy, about Rock Wright? It actually was a brilliant move. When you look at the contract breakdown, I have the details right in front of me. They gave him a $3.545 million signing bonus. So the cap hit in year one, the Intel 
when he was signed his ERFA deal, which allowed the other team to make him an offer, he was going to get two point nine million. Now his base salary is one million and fifty five thousand seven hundred and nine thousand in a prorated signing bonus, a fifty thousand dollar workout bonus, which is a one point seven six four million dollar gift cap hit the first year, which saves two point two million dollars. The next year, because they actually the way they did it was like a futures contract. It's spread out over four years instead of just the three years. It's only a 2.6 cap hit. And in the third year, it's a it's a 4.8 cap hit. So it's backloaded, and there's only a 2.1 dead cap if he's cut. So therefore, they get him for two years in the prime of his career while he's still one of the best run blockers on the team. And he also does a good job when Sam Laporta's off the field of being that swing guy across the middle because he's done his best two plays. Uh, what was it against Minnesota? And then the exact same play the year before was against the jets when he had his 51 yard touchdown reception. Mm -hmm. So he does really well. If you watch whatever side Brock Wright is on, if Gibbs is in the game, that's the side where Gibbs Gibbs is running outside. Well, that's about as in depth. That's more in depth than one of the other ones I asked you. So you made up for your air time on that one. All right, coach, what do uh, you think of the that I got something to add about that Jets thing. The reason why the QBs and the running backs didn't get a lot of yards, period. And guess, right? Grace Hall had those two big runs that boosted his stats by a yard because the interior O line play was so horrible. Hmm. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, you know what, Coach? What do you think? I, you know, I, you know, I think uh, Je I think Jeremy nailed it. I mean, that was a well researched, and I I can't add anything to it. I think he did it. I think he did an ex excellent job with that. I think it's you know he. I learned a lot. Thanks, Jeremy. We got a lot. Of, you know, we got a lot of candy fans out here. So you know what. Travis, go ahead and say what you're going to say about Brock Wright, but they want to hear another announcement, so let's go ahead and do it. I mean, mm -hmm. Candy's got a following because she reads our announcements so effortlessly. All right, go ahead. What do you think about <laughs> Brock Wright? Was that the right move, Mr. Holmes? I mean, it's Brad Holmes. Uh, of course it's the right move. Um, as, as someone who is a fan of a team that does not have Brad Holmes, um, you know, in, in the front office, yeah, I, I'm I'm tired of having to say that every uh, you know in the past few off seasons. Um, I will be very interested in watching him make a bad move. For just 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 to switch it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> no, I mean yeah yeah I'm sorry. Right, was he's a he's a very solid side into. He fills you know, he fills that hole so that the 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 Lions can now go into the draft. Really having minimal holes overall, they can truly go BPA. Um, you know, in the first few rounds and best thing that out of all of this is maybe they'll just have that one role to fill of that wide receiver three spot. Overall, it's this not a lot of money. He's a great alternative option outside of Laporta. And yeah, I, I, I got nothing negative to say. And I would really love to be able to say something negative about it. <laughs> well, I feel bad for you. Not. Okay. <laughs> With that said, you know what? I, I really don't feel bad for you, Travis. Okay. But I tell you, I'm going to mention something in a few minutes that you're going to feel good about, especially if Jaguar fans can appreciate this. Maybe you not, Jeremy, because you haven't been in that box, but I know what's happened. But with, but with that said, Lion, you know what? The best part about this whole move is the Lions won't have to go worry about the tight end as much. All right. So now, so what do we got here in the chat room? All right. Well, all right, Josh was going to, everybody's going to give you your Panthers update so we'll get it out there for joshua door panthers up to the nothing four minutes left panthers destroy the senators again cheers well all right we got some fans out there of course well brady kachuk needs to request to trade to florida all right let's get a couple of hockey and all the emojis and all salutes are on honor of smoking jeremy b all right let's keep it going when you get to emojis i go very fast in the chat there you go all right with that said candy take over for a moment and then we'll i'll close the show on this note if you see that red subscribe button, hit it, like us, and more importantly, share us with all your friends, family, anybody you think that would be interested. Monday nights we do baseball, Tuesday nights we do football, Wednesday nights we do all sports, Thursday nights we do all sports as well. 
if you like to listen to podcasts, you can catch us on Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcasts. We have a website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. If you'd like to advertise or sponsor a show, call Scott, 954-304-4941. If you want to see some good photography, go to our website. Check out www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. Scott writes, Jeremy writes, we get Jag stuff, Dolphins, Detroit Lions, NFL stuff. Go check out our website. Scott wrote a book. Scott's book is up in the upper corner. It's actually covering his face right now. But it is Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. We also have another panelist that's not on tonight. He's on a couple of other shows. He actually wrote a book, True, Detroit's Broadcast. Detroit Broadcasters on the Air. Scott actually is in that book. Go check that book out, too. With all of that said, back to you, Scott. All right. Well, you know what? There's no better way that I can end this show than the way I'm going to do it right now, okay? And I think Coach Bono and Travis could definitely appreciate where I'm coming from here. First of all, I want to congratulate my great friend, Dan Edwards. He's now a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He won the award because he won the award of excellence in public relations. He is in my book. I'm probably going to talk to him real soon. And Dan to me is one of the classiest PR guys I've ever seen. And more importantly, he's always been a great friend. So Dan, to me, you're unbelievable. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon and seeing you before long. And I met Dan Edwards through my one of my close friends, Chip Namus. So Coach Bono, you know who Dan is. Any thoughts Absolutely. about him? One of the all-time greats. Uh, you know, first and foremost, just a, a tremendous human being, great person, uh, and really, really good at his job. Uh, was with the Jags for a long, long time. Uh, got a chance to see him, get reacquainted with him, see him uh, at a Jaguar game uh, this past fall. Hasn't changed a bit. Um, still talk to him from time to time. Uh, I think you had mentioned that before, Scott. I didn't realize that you were that close with them. and makes me uh, think even more highly of you. Well, you know what, Dan, to me, is he's just great. I mean, if I mentioned it before, great. If I didn't, well, I'm doing it now. And if I do it twice, he, he, that means it's, it twice is good when I talk about it. So it doesn't matter. Dan, to me, is just one of the classiest people on the planet. You know, getting Travis, you got to know Dan a little bit, didn't you? Oh, you didn't? Okay. Dan was there. Well, you got David Wolf, who was really very right. cooperative as well. David. So, well, you know what? Dan trained him. So, you know, uh, David Wolf was trained by the best. And let's go to the chat room. Rocket scientist. All right. Let's keep it going here. Okay. I got to make sure I get to these. Dan, I know you're going to see the show because I'm going to send it to you. Joshua Dorr says, well deserved, Dan. Good, Dan. All right. There we go. Keep it going. Dan is goaded. Only he capitalized it this time. Deserves well. All right. All right. Well, Joshua Dorr definitely knows how to spell the word Dan. Okay. Hello, everybody. Ralph Williams, just to let you know, this broadcast, I know you have other shows starts at 830, but I guess in your case, Ralph, better late than never. Okay. And so much good news in the show is fantastic. You know what? You guys in the chat room make it even more fun when you participate. And you, and more importantly, when you, you guys are getting better when it comes to staying on point, because I'll tell you one thing about this game of football. We do everything in our power to make sure that this sport gets the attention that we feel that it definitely deserves. So, yeah, I like Josh O'Dor. Good morning, Ralph. There you go. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, but whatever. So, Dan, you know, we'll talk soon. And there's a reason why I put you in my book because you deserved it. But your honors there in Jacksonville and what you've done. And actually, he was the original, one of the original mm -hmm. athletes in Jacksonville when they, the operation began. So, I hope you it's a well deserved honor and enjoy the most of the day. God bless. So with that said, okay, Travis, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. You can find me on all the socials, uh, Travis D. Holmes on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Yeah, you can find my writings covering the Jacksonville Jaguars at bigcatcountry.com. Uh, you can find me wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we have a podcast on Fridays at 1130 a.m. Uh, the Duval Dive, a Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. For those of you who are fans or just interested in becoming fans because, you know, it's such a great team. 
not hating on Alliance, mind your business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, you can find me here every week on the Inside the Pigskin or sometimes on the Sports Exchange. So often on Pundits, Pundit, just you can catch me wherever you need because I'm always going to be here to talk some football. Right, good night, Rocket Scientist. Good night, Joshua Dora. Well done by you. And as well as C, you did a great job as well. With that said, we'll go over to Coach Bono. How can everybody get a hold of you? Well, you can find me here on most every Tuesday night. You can find me on LinkedIn. That's the only social media platform that I'm on. And uh, now that the weather's getting warmer, I'm a proud member of the Thursday night boat uh, mowing league. I'll be mowing my lawn every Thursday night. That way I can right. have it nice and fresh and looking great for the weekend. Oh, you're the best coach, I'll tell you. you I know that there's a – you bring a lot of great things to this broadcast, and boy, you're getting better at this broadcasting thing, Coach. Let me tell you, when when I brought you on here, you were as timid as you could be, but now he fit in really good with the rest of us, man. He's one of the guys. You always tell me, I love coming on the show because I have fun doing it. Well, come on, Coach. We have fun with you. We, if people can't have fun on this show, then um, I'm sorry, but we know what fun is in this environment, and those that have worked around me long enough know. Of course, if you're Jeremy Balrick, there's a couple different ways you could look at it. There's a, the way you work it with Katie Ebling, where you have a country club. Then you have a black and white fun with me, where you get a lot of information. You do all that business, but it is what it is. All right, Rocket Scientist has one more question. Coach, you, you can handle this one. What type of grass do I have? St. Augustine. St. Augustine. Did you hear that? We're down here in Florida, Josh. That's about the only thing. Got St. Augustine. Yeah. Bluegrass. Augustine or Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah, I think I have a blend. Oh, okay. yeah. There you go. Well, so when he when he takes that job overseas for five or six months, I'm sure he'll find <laughs> other ways to do it. So we're in Florida, so she's probably I guess Joshua Dorr is looking to deliver furniture up there. Uh, we're we're um we're in Palm Coast, which is over on the east side. We're uh, right right in between uh, Daytona Beach and St. Augustine. There you go. All right. Last but not least, Jeremy Balrek. Let everybody know they can reach you. Well, you can always find me on the SouthFloridaTribune.com, where you'll find my writings on the Motor City Tribune heading, where I write about the Detroit Lions and some articles also about the NFL. You can also find me right here on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel on Inside the Big Skin, Fire Up. And soon to be, is it funded? Funded? Yeah, well, um, yeah, you'll be on there part time, but also you're going to be on Professor and the Pupil. Right? Most right. likely, the, the lineup will look like if you're on Professor and the Pupil, then you won't be on the Pundit Show. That way, it keeps a nice balance. But yeah, obviously, for those of you that are just joining us, last week Jacob Krishner decided to step aside from Pundit's Pundit, and he's left me with it to build it in the manner for which I'm going to continue to keep it going. So, but meanwhile, mm -hmm. yeah, look, yeah, look at it. Joshua Dory, you got to get this one up. Okay. Did Jeremy destroy Chris to snag his spot on the show? Well, <laughs> no, yeah, I no. just wanted to get that apology you guys wanted. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, that being said, you can also find me on my YouTube channel, which is Kneecap Bitem with the Motor City Lions, where I'm live Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. and on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. Where we oh, yeah. talk about, and Wednesday is the NFL show, and the rest of it is all Detroit Lions all the time. All right, well, there you have it. So, last few comments decided Jacob was crucified from the show. Ha ha. Well, Joshua Dorr, we all know that you're not sending Jacob Chris or any Christmas card that's already uh, been established. Rocket scientists, I'll see you on the sports exchange tomorrow. You bet you will. And, and look at these guys. I love the love out here. So there you go. I'll just let, for those of you that are watching on visual, there you go. You got to salute and all those guys. And guys. We salute them for the energy that they bring to the show. That they do. You know what? I don't mind extending shows just a little bit longer when you have this incredible energy. Right, Coach? Don't you like energy? Don't you love an active chat room? People are actually watching us, listening to us, and talking to us. You got to love it. Travis Travis really <laughs> and now you were able to get Travis to laugh. Look at this. Oh my god. Hey, I even got the emoji. I even got the emoji. <laughs> well, you know, these guys are making the chat room classic. Welcome to the chat room where fun and games is what it's all about. And we get to as many of as we can and put them all up as fan as can be. 
and put them up there. With that said, that does. We'll call it a night. I did sign the picks win. We'll be on next Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Take care, everybody. Tomorrow night's lineup, the Motor City Mad Miles show will be on. Steve Ballesteri and I will be on that one. That'll start around 7.30 Eastern Time, followed by the Sports Exchange at approximately 9 o'clock. So hope you can join us for both broadcasts. In the meantime, on behalf of Jeremy Balrick, Bo, who just left, Coach Bono, Travis, and Candy, we want to thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside the Pigskin. And Robert says, see you tomorrow night. Sports Exchange, looking forward to it. Have a great night, everybody, and thank you very much for your awesome job tonight. God bless. Have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.